at LaGuardia is a ghetto airport. Yes, Did it you is. come? It's so ghetto, yes. Anne, right? What is no, that? Trump is right about it. Yeah. And by the way, all, all, all oh, sorry, my mic's on. <laughs> I'm just shouting across the room to you. Um, all the Uber drivers are well aware of that one time. Um, I was getting an Uber from from LaGuardia, and it just at airports it like automatically goes to pool. Apparently, they assume right. you want to pool, which right. that's the I first. I don't like to pool. First time I realized it, and I would inadvertently ordered a pool car. So anyway, I'm sitting quietly in the back, and uh, the Uber driver he picked up a few other women in the neighborhood I was going to, um, but the the Uber driver, um, clearly an immigrant, is driving through LaGuardia, talking about how awful it is, and then he said perkily. Donald Trump will fix it. Oh. <laughs> and the other Manhattan ladies were not very happy with that. No. But he just persisted. And, and he said, remember, in his in his convention speech, he said he'd fix it. And he no he noticed he was getting pushed back. I really wanted to cheer him, but yeah. he just let it, let I don't it go. I know how you could uh, <laughs> hang out as much as you do in L.A. and New York. I got into a fight every half hour in New York. <laughs> I've got to be with you in, in New York. I just want to walk. It would be like walking around with a Trump T-shirt. Oh, so it was hard. <laughs> Horrendous. I don't, is it like on me or something? How do people know? I, I mean, they just start with me. Well, maybe when you whoop when John McCain goes into the hospital, Missy. It's a giveaway. Huh? Well, I'm trying. I'm trying to contain myself. But uh, it was tough. There was a guy driving down the West Side Highway in a beautiful Lexus, a brand new Lexus. I didn't know Lexus made a two seater. Oh. Yeah, a really nice looking little two seater. He's on the West Side Highway and he had a bumper sticker on that said, I am not a liberal. I thought that was so cool. You know, I'm beeping and carrying, waving, you know. I th only in New York would you That's have to funny. write that. Yeah, would you have a bumper sticker that says that? And, of course, uh, he better be careful before they key his car. Right. And, uh, it was horrendous. That's an L.A. thing. Yeah. Well, Anne is in the studio. We'll be talking, and apparently uh, she has caught the attention of every major network news station has shown up here today because um, she has uh, alienated and angered uh, an entire airline. You know, as she is uh, wont to do. Go when Ann. Talk, Ann. <laughs> right. When Ann talks, <laughs> airlines buckle. Where was their stock prices today? Do we have any idea? Because I'm suspicious. Anyway. Somebody tweeted that they're down. I'm sure they are. And I will be reading the statement from the CEO who refused to come on the program. But I will read his statement when we come back. Stay right where you are. Joyce Kaufman with you. Ann Coulter in the studio. Um, she's not tweeting. She's actually speaking now. Stay right where you are. Though I might tweet. The only person who writes better headlines than the New York Post is Matt Drudge, who wrote, Ann Coulter turbulence with Delta Airlines is his headline for this story. Welcome to the program. Ann Coulter is in the studio with me today because apparently um, we have two different versions of what happened on Saturday. So we brought you in and we offered a microphone to uh, to the to the CEO of, of Delta Airlines, but uh, they didn't have time to come on the show, and they have issued the following statement in response to your insults. Though this is not the CEO whom I really wanted you to dial fast before he's fired. We're trying. Um, so she, of course, Anne took to social media. She does that every day about every issue. It doesn't matter if she got a bad shake at Carvel. She's going on Twitter to let Not too run. many consumer complaints. It's mostly political. Not yeah. many people on Twitter on Saturday. I was surprised at how quickly they were getting thousands of likes and retweets for a Saturday. I mean, people check on their iPhones. But I think it's because airlines, and particularly Delta, have gotten so completely out of control. It's as if they do not have to to they're not a customer oriented business anymore and i think of the people who fly and a lot more people aren't flying at all um i think it's only about a third of the country but that third of the country is ticked off enough oh, yes. that in the middle of a saturday in the summer these tweets in my cab on the way home from the airport i check back a few hours later and bam oh yeah it was it was not only was i getting your tweets but they were being retweeted so many times that my phone blew up i had to turn it off <laughs> you know, because we're in the same uh, track there anyway. Well, let me read the following statement from Delta in response. We are sorry that the customer did not receive the seat she reserved and paid for. More importantly, we are disappointed that the customer has chosen to publicly attack our employees and other customers by posting derogatory and slanderous comments and photos in social media. Her actions are unnecessary and unacceptable. 
Each of our employees is charged with treating each other as well as our customers with dignity and respect, and we hold each other accountable when that does not happen. Delta expects mutual civility throughout the entire travel experience. We will refund Miss Coulter's thirty dollars for the preferred seat on the exit row that she purchased. So uh, you book seat fifteen F, one of my favorite seats. What happened? Well, first of all, um, Delta and I do agree on one thing. Um, my tweets, if true, were defamatory because, <laughs> because uh, I mean, their allegation of defamatory, it would be defamatory, if, or, or rather, if it weren't true. Um, all I did was report what happened. I'm glad they, they're alarmed by that because there was no indication that they were particularly alarmed until now. Um, this is why flying is so, is so unpleasant. These arbitrary rules, they lure you, you in, they invite you to book, um, choose your seat online. I spend a lot of time I'm doing it. I fly a lot. I have particular reasons for wanting the seat I want. I checked back, which, by the way, they told the New York Times today they could tell when I was checking back and switching seats. So they know the seat was important to me. I don't know why they think that's an argument for their side. Um, I ran into a friend of mine from down here in the waiting area. Um, so um, I have proof, and apparently you need proof for everything you say with these people, um, that I was in the, the, the waiting area 90 minutes before the flight took off. No one ever called me up and asked me if I'd like to switch. Um, I mean, obviously, anyone would be happy to switch for an elderly person, a sick person, someone freakishly tall. Or a free ticket. I even mean, more freakishly me tall than I am. I, I might even agree to switch just to let a woman sit, sit next to her husband. But I'd like to be asked, and whoa, that's not what happened. So I'm boarding after spending all this time offline. Um, and, and as I'm going through boarding, the, the, the gate agent just snatches my ticket out of my hand and hands me a little slip saying, your seat's been changed. And I said, why? And she said, emergency. Um, so, you know, I have 200 people behind me waiting to board. So I went ahead and boarded and, oh, look, my seat is empty. So I sat in my seat. Um, the other seats filled up. And then a woman came and did not take the seat they were trying to move me to. Normally, that's what people do if they don't care. Right. Um, but obviously, this was a desirable seat, more leg room and an aisle seat, which for my own reasons, I like. Um, and the stewardess came up and, and demanded to see the tickets. I said, well, this isn't my ticket. The gate agent took my ticket. This was the seat I booked. And reserved and she said you have to move i said why and she said i don't know so, so i sat and fumed and i would have gotten my tweets off way sooner um except their wi-fi was down um and yeah I, it was a nice plane but it wasn't the seat i wanted i wanted a seat for my own reasons that i could do work in i have a lot of a lot of reasons but it's really no one's business that was the seat i booked they invite you to do this if they want to be spirit they airlines, charge you extra for it forget the charge that's a snippy remark this 30 dollars. if they think the seat is only worth 30 dollars why didn't they give that woman $30 and let me have my seat? Right. No, I wanted the seat. I chose it for a reason. And they lured me in to waste all this time online looking up what kind of aircraft it is. Airbus, I don't know, 316 or 318, looking to see which, which ones have the most room. I mean, I am very tall, but like I say, this is the seat I chose. Why did they waste my time doing that? Um, the reason I took a picture of the people taking my seat, because I suspected, and whoa, was it true, um, that El Delta would lie um, and would claim it's an air marshal, would claim it was a tall person, would claim it was an old person no it was a perfectly fit woman um about a foot shorter than i am that's why it was relevant there was nothing defamatory about the customer except she was not tall i am tall this is why it made a difference and why did you give it to her no explanation ever i didn't get an explanation i didn't get an apology i got i got what i got was and i think the reason it's blown up more today than Saturday, I think it blew up because people so hate the airlines and they're arbitrary. I mean, this is this is all out of Stanley Milgram's experiment at Yale, where you allowed some students to be the prison guards over other students. This is what the flying experience has become like, just arbitrary rules imposed on you. And you just have to lie back and take it unless you want to be dragged off the plane like like that other customer. Um, now, but the reason what, I think it blew up today is because um, after initially responding appropriately and by the way i responded appropriately i have my my direct tweets to prove it explaining everything giving them all of the information um suddenly 
um, the midday customer service, you know, Twitter responders um, may not be the top. They're not sending their best at Delta. Um, they're not sending their best for the Sunday afternoon tweeting. And they have, um, you know, some social justice warriors tweeting out. They're going to now abuse me further. Well, uh-huh. it, look, it's bad enough they're abusing me when I'm trapped. I'm their prisoner um, and I can't do anything. But when I'm when I'm when I'm, you know, sitting in a cab, when I'm on my own time, I've left the plane. They're going to start policing my behavior. Those tweets were inappropriate. Good grief. Um, And and OK, you know, maybe mm-hmm. they'll make the decision. I don't think the CEO would make this decision. I don't think the corporate office is going to be happy that they have social justice warriors running their response team. But maybe they'll make the decision, you know. Um, Coulter's very partisan. Um, a lot of people don't like her. The media is certainly going to be, we could have hit her with a baseball bat. And the Daily Mail and the New York Post would say, you go Delta. Maybe they're going to go with that and just say, screw you to half their customers. But I'm sorry, this is an internal injury. They may uh, When they go under, I won't say it's only because of me. It's It'll be because of the woman who was sexually harassed on the flight to London and, right. and Delta wouldn't do anything about it. It'll be because of endless flight delays. It'll be of who knows what. But this is an internal injury that's hit them. Yeah. Well, and I think I guess what, what is most bothersome to me is I had a, a ho- awful flying experience as well out of New York this week. And it's the it's the rudeness and the arrogance right. of the staff that you're dealing with. You know, if you're going to cancel my flight five hours into the night where I have no recourse but to book another flight the next day at my expense, go find a hotel room, get myself to the hotel room and back, at least be nice to me instead of <laughs> yelling at me, get back in line. You can't have your luggage. What do you mean I can't have my luggage? I'm not going to the hotel without my luggage right. and leaving it here for my potentially <laughs> delayed or canceled flight tomorrow. Right. And just I was treated arrogantly and rudely, and it wasn't Delta. It was JetBlue. So there's something Which going really on. Which really surprises me because they're usually very good. I mean, you do get get some the odd <laughs> the odd case, but I I normally do fly JetBlue. Um, and I think it was because, I mean, I've always sort of assumed they used to be non-unionized. Um, and I think they have a union now, but that same mentality of actually being nice to customers has, has seems to, by and large, have stayed with JetBlue. Yeah. Well, listen, and, and I also think it's LaGuardia because that is, a, I, I use the term ghetto airport because I have never seen an airport in such bad condition yes. in, in the center of America. You know, New York City is a fairly prestigious city. If someone lands at LaGuardia, <laughs> they would be hard Trump pressed to figure that out. It. Trump talked about it in his convention speech. <laughs> I flew out of JFK. I refused to go back to LaGuardia. Uh, I'll fly Newark or JFK from now on because I've never seen anything like that. People lying on the floor, like homeless people living in the airport. It probably took you an hour to get out of LaGuardia. It was awful. It was a nightmare. And again, you know, I I also had one of those at the gate experiences where I had gone for a more room seating. Um, once I realized I was now trapped uh, another day, I said, well, then I'm paying the extra, getting another, you know, getting an aisle seat or getting a, a for Billy and I an exit row seat. And so I did it online because the woman refused to do it at the gate for me. She said, oh, I can't do that. Well, so I did if it you online. were Delta, you, they wouldn't have respected it anyway. So... Well, I guess why so. bother doing it? They online? took my. Though I think they should have license. charges. They, they asked me for my driver's license to let me on the plane because I had done a. Oh yeah, you know, weirdly they did what that. What is that? They did that at this airport too. I don't. I don't know why. But and again, that's why I wasn't going to hold everyone up when my ticket was snatched from me. But if it's thirty dollars, and again, why didn't they just give that woman thirty dollars if they think that's all it's worth, as opposed to my time spent specifically put picking this seat, which wasn't that important to this woman since she didn't bother pre-booking it. Um, I also want to know what the charges are for um, being berated, um, being abused on social media, having a ticket snatched out of my hand, um, being brusquely told, I don't know, being removed from my seat. What are the charges for those? I think they ought to post that on the, on the website, each one of the charges, $30 for each one of those. All right. Looks like you're ahead of the game. All right. Let's take a quick break. Joyce Kaufman with you along with Ann Coulter in the studio. Stay right where you are. So I'm remiss. Everybody wants to see what's going on. We are Facebook Live. If you go to our website, 850 WFTL. Where's the Facebook camera? I'll wave. 
that wave at Facebook. Anne's here. She, she's really, really here. And uh, we do have some uh, television network coverage as well. Um, so the story has exploded. I mean, and I think you're right. I think it taps into people's generalized frustration with airlines who are pretty much at this point abusing us all. I heard today that more people are buying one-way tickets than round-trip tickets because they can save money. Do you remember after 9-11, we weren't allowed to buy oh, one-way right. tickets? Yeah. It was absolutely, you cannot, we're not going to book a ticket one way because you could be a terrorist. Right, right. And look, no one hit me. I didn't hang myself in an airport. I don't know if you saw that happen yes, or no. Hair this week. Yeah. The point is, this was cost-free customer service. Right. But just for fun, there's just, again, it's Stanley Milgram's Yale experiment. People, you give some people power over other people and they turn into the Stasi. Mm -hmm. It's just fun to, you know, or boss people around and tell them do this, that, and the other thing with no explanation. This is how you drive people insane, by, by, by imposing arbitrary rules on them, um, changing the rules. I mean, I mean, I think the rule is pretty clear when you sign up for your ticket and and pick your seat now. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. I mean, obviously, my head goes to this immediately. Um, do you think it was because it's you? Because there I, are times when it's because it's me that things happen to me. I didn't think so, but I do think the social warrior, justice warriors responding on Twitter, that's because it's me. Um, the overwhelming media coverage... Um, cheering this, um, that's because it's me. So I don't know. Delta can can say we're willing to write off half of America and say and, and just admit uh, we're going to let our social justice warriors sneer and snip at this woman because um, because the media is left wing and they don't like her. Um, but I I would think for a consumer oriented business that would be a mistake. See, but, you know, there's something, and it's happened to me frequently here because I'm a local radio personality and have been in this market for 27 years. So I, I'm not going to experience it in New York, but everybody in the country has seen your face either on television or, or read a book or seen your, you know, at the airports, your books are always prominently displayed. And, and I'm thinking to myself, some wise guy at the uh, gate took one look at you and some lady came up and said, I really want to change my seat or I want to sit next to my husband. He says, oh, let's give a cult a seat. You know, what is she going to do about it? Pick it the could wrong, be, but they, the wrong cookie. they ought to be investigating. I mean, what, what is this, day three now without an explanation? Um, and also in their little social justice warrior response here, um, no, they haven't given one answer on this. They've given a whole series of answers, but their main answer is to abuse me, um, continue to abuse me. Um, but in in one response, I have um, texted to me yesterday, get everything in writing with them. Oh, they wanted me to call no phone calls. No phone You'll lie calls. about what you said. Um, just over and over, this, this customer service representative, Susanna something, kept saying, sorry, we inadvertently gave away your seat well n no th dropping a glass of coke on somebody or a you know glass knocking over a, a bottle of wine that's inadvertent this involves going on to the computer right. finding a booked seat switching a person out of it printing off the ticket for the new seat that the customer did not book um and that does not have as much leg room they act like all these seats are the same no they're not that's why i looked up the airline before booking my seat um the seat i booked had a lot more leg room and i like the aisle seat um, um, and then and then putting another woman into it, giving her her ticket. This isn't inadvertent. So no. it was deliberate. No. So now what's next? I mean, obviously, they've now accused you of slandering them. I mean, I know um, you're an attorney, so you're not going to say I'm, too much. But uh, I mean, really, if it's true, it's not slander. If it's, you know, they're a public corporation. They have to be able to, to withstand criticism, even online, in social media. But it wasn't, like I say, it, only if it weren't true. It's, All I did was describe the facts of what happened. With you said they're the worst evidence. airline in the world. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> okay, well. well oh, oh, are, are you kidding me? That's Spirit defamatory? Is the Spirit is the worst. <laughs> no, because thing. Spirit doesn't waste your time making you book seats online. They say it's a cheap flight. Free for all. Don't right. bother going on and looking up the airline and picking right. the seat you want. And I, I don't know if I said this earlier. I ran into a friend, of also a friend of your producers, um, and also 
um, on air talent, Karen Curtis. Um, and we sat in the at the boarding area for 90 minutes. He was in first class and he's a gazillion mile member. So he offered to upgrade me to first class. And then suddenly he's like darting toward the counter. And I emailed him saying, no, I like my seat. (laughs) I didn't want to be interrupted with champagne and cookies or anything else. I wanted to sit and work in a big seat. I picked the big seat. I reserved it. I checked it. I looked to see as the seats were filling up, moved it to get the best seat I could. That's the time that was wasted. Um, I mean, I haven't asked for money. It was only in response to them saying, oh, we'll give you $30 back. That I said, no, actually, my, my, you wasted $10,000 of my time. Mm-hmm. So if we're, if, we're counting, if we're counting my actual damages, no, it's $10,000 Delta, not, not the $30. And again, if this seat was only worth $30, why didn't you give the other woman the $30 and let me keep the seat? I had carefully pre-selected and reserved. It is like that scene from Seinfeld. You know, we can, we can take the rest. We just can't keep it. Right. All right. We got to take a break. Stay right where you are. It's fascinating, really. Uh, Members of the media here are asking questions and they're kind of stuck on whether or not Ann was insulting to the passenger because she referred to her legs as uh, dachshund legs, which to me says, well, you know what's so fascinating? If if we were sitting here and you were like Sean Penn. And you had actually said something horrifying, it wouldn't be a news story. And, and I know that to be a fact that, that the idea that conservatives are held to a much different standard than, than liberals are. I mean, well, the president is not allowed to tweet anything. He, he, he affectionately uh, complimented the first lady of France, and he's been excoriated right. morning, noon, and night. Reebok put out a whole thing about how you don't talk to women like that. And I'm, I want to go on the record. Anybody who wants to tell me in front of my husband that my workouts are working <laughs> and I look beautiful, please feel free to do that. It's only the media that thinks there's something wrong with that. Right. No, they jump on every little thing. Um, well, one, yeah, docks and legs. Um, we're talking about Again, a seat that is titled the extra legroom seat. Right. That's why that was relevant. This is not comparing her to a dog. It's not calling her dog face. It's referring to her short legs um, to point out that it was not a gigantically tall person among the other possibilities that Delta might have lied about for this. And look, it might well be true. I'll even I'll even concede for purposes of argument um, that if it were the exact same scenario and this were Sean Penn or Michael Moore, maybe you and I would be laughing about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, fine. You want to take that bet, Delta? Right, exactly. You think most of your passengers, you, you want to just write off half the country there? Especially the ones who will pay for extra leg room. Because <laughs> right. they got to be employed. And, and on I don't the tweeting, I, the, I do find it utterly fascinating of all the attacks both on on Trump and now on me. Are liberals slow tweeters? They yeah. seem to think this takes an enormous portion of your day. According to Daily Mail, I spent the, my entire weekend. I, have they heard of the iPhone? It takes you seven seconds to say. <laughs> to send a tweet. I think all weekend I spent mm, at most 11 minutes tweeting. That is not spending all weekend. Do they know about the 140 character limit? Yeah, and I said this today when I first came on and was referring to this and then referring to all of the commentary about uh, the president's tweets over the last six months. I said, you know, I find it absolutely fascinating that because we're finally able to get a message out without it being filtered and altered by by all of the traditional newspapers and television and radio media um they just they can't handle right. it they just can't handle it. I, people have been lying about me for 27 years right and i have had to take it you know yeah but now that i have a chance to respond and say well no that's not really what happened right and the, and the airline should not move me oh my god i'm, I'm not civil i don't know how to behave the president has, has no manners stop tweeting he has to stop it's 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 fascinating really no it reminds me different. i want i want to come with my own rule for people who go on TV. If all you have to say is the president should stop tweeting or make some mention of how he's running his White House like a reality TV show, you don't have to go on TV. Right. 
You don't have to. If you don't have anything to say, you don't right. don't don't feel like that commentary is necessary out there. Have you noticed that's all you hear twenty four hours a day? No, I want them tweeting more. Right. And maybe in the future, you know, you will be more circumspect about picking on on someone that you see as being vulnerable. You know, a single woman traveling alone, what's she gonna do? She's not gonna put up much of a fuss. Yeah, if it's not Ann Coulter or it's not Joyce Kaufman, you won't, they probably won't put up much of a fuss. But at this point, we've been empowered. We've been empowered by social media, which gives me a chance to respond immediately when things happen. And I do use it to go over the heads and past the mainstream because I never had this opportunity before. I had to accept whatever the New York papers wrote about me. Is You, you know how, how reluctant I am to give interviews or to have people in the mm-hmm. studio because I've been burned so many right. times. I wouldn't have given the New York Times that interview if you hadn't a vouch for Jeremy and I'm still sorry that I did it because <laughs> sorry. You know, he, he just wait said, didn't he, he quote you accurately himself. he quoted me it was his commentary that yeah. was snippet exactly yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I should be used to it by now it's like their perspective and their stand is always going to be there's something wrong with the way I interact right. with people uh, because they don't agree with me and they don't like my opinions but the bottom line is um, I don't get to stay on the air 27 years because nobody likes my opinions or because I'm so crazy and right. so out there I speak as Donald Trump spoke to about half of America right they hear my voice they understand what Ann Coulter writes about in her books and they and they are grateful that people are standing up for them mm-hmm. you know because nobody else might have gotten the attention that you got but there are hundreds of thousands of people who fly around this country every day that get mistreated by airlines not just Delta not just JetBlue but by all these airlines we've seen it on American we've seen it on every you name it we've seen a story of somebody being dragged out a a person's baby carriage being yanked out from their hands Uh, I mean it's happening and if someone high profile pushes back they ought to just apologize and, and immediately go to uh, not so offensive and maybe go on the defense a little. And this would have passed right by. And also instruct their employees. We are a consumer oriented business. It's just the entire mentality. Sometimes um, I've mostly had fantastic experiences. Um, this is this is very rare. Um I do think most flight attendants are really fantastic. I know a lot of them. I know a lot of pilots. Um, this, I was really getting that that arrogant attitude you hear about. I, I mean, mostly in what was done. And it doesn't take that much. Like I say, this isn't a plane crash, but... It, is it that hard for for a consumer oriented business not to be arbitrarily changing rules, moving people out of reserved seats and just saying, I don't know, take it and like it? Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, you know, when this flight was canceled at LaGuardia on Monday night, there was a young woman, a single mom with a baby. And now she has no milk. She's mel- she had a total meltdown, and the airlines treated her as though there was something terribly wrong. Like, well, call somebody. She goes, I don't live in New York. I was here visiting. I'm trying to get home. I have six dollars in my pocket. I have wow. nowhere to stay. And they were like, just they just discounted her and her feelings. Then there was an older woman in a wheelchair, and now they're wheeling her out to a bus to take her to JFK to oh, get this on another is horrible. flight. It was horrible. And 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 they were arrogant and angry because, of course, now they have, have to. Tweet- Late. about this no you know but i'm thinking about it now i talked because to my I'm, audience about it on when i came back i spent the whole i show bet on you it. jet blue will respond properly well, you know they better respond because i wrote them a letter I, when i when i've had flights delayed on jet blue as you're i mean by more than i forget what it is two you hours get a credit and, as you're walking off the the gang plank they're telling you and you 75 got 75 dollar credit in your travel bank i heard you but they do that it like did, that that did not no, happen this sounds here. very unusual for them happen. and if i had not raised the fuss that i booked a ticket because i had to get back to work right as it was i still didn't make it but they had reassigned me to a plane that wouldn't have gotten me in until Thursday. And I said, that is not going to fly. <laughs> yeah, I've had and that I booked a, a $758 ticket in place of my $120 ticket to get home the next day. And then I call up and say, look, you're going to have to reimburse me these funds. And they said, oh, no, well, we don't do that. We, we already booked you another flight. And I said, excuse me, I want to talk to your supervisor. And within short order, my PayPal account was refunded. But I'm telling you, that single mom had no recourse. She slept with her baby in an airport that night with 
with six dollars in her pocket and i watched carefully until i actually left and i slipped her a little money because i thought at least if she can get some milk for this baby but who, who treats people like that right you know, well that's the other thing about the new york airports oh. they it, they seem not to they're great but except planes can't take off or land with any regularity well this was a you want to know what the reason was that we didn't get off there was a fire in the air traffic controllers tower in dc okay so now oh that shut everything down? was covered was right oh. okay so now any other airline would not be waiting for their only plane from fort lauderdale or orlando to come in so that we could take it back right They'd have an extra plane at jfk they had 20 uh, JetBlue planes but at laguardia Four gates, one plane. Yeah, LaGuardia is very, very, very bad. I can't, I can't, you know, that's not my fault. I want to be treated um, nicely you know, I when wish you Trump have a problem like that. would come back from all of this gallivanting abroad and concentrate on, on America's problems, including fixing LaGuardia, which he promised in his convention speech. Mm -hmm. And a border wall, which, and, by the way, well, is that's now the number one that issue. The, <laughs> the co committee just gave him the money. Now let's see what the uh, House and the Senate do with that. You know, I was just that. noticing yesterday, what is it, One like $1.9 billion? $1.6 billion. Okay, meanwhile, Google this right now. How much they're spending on opioid addiction. Oh, please. Right. A billion. Right. It's it's like twenty times more. Well, whatever it is, you know, you could you could really solve that heroin problem with the wall. There's so many problems. Everything gets easier with a wall. Yeah, well, I agree, and and I think part of the reason that uh, maybe they thought it was okay to change your seat, and part of the reason I sometimes will be treated mistreated locally is because they they really think it's it's okay. Um, because they don't like my opinions and they don't like your opinions. And it just, that it's, could be, it, but I must say I did not think so. I don't particularly think so now, but isn't that what they've had 48 hours to investigate? Do it they looks know? more like it now than yeah. it did before. Because yeah. I assure you, if you were Bette Midler, you would have been given a private jet. I wouldn't be getting these snippy replies on Twitter refunding $30. No, that'll be $10,000 Delta. Did they know that you're an attorney? Apparently not. Um, yes, but I better sue fast before they go under. <laughs> Their stock price is down. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Ann Coulter is in the studio. And I know that there are probably people out there wondering why I was uh, railing against the mainstream media since they were in here covering it. But that's why I was doing it. If you could have seen the interview they conducted during the break with Ann... Uh, they were it's so nice to have a witness oh my god they were <laughs> unable to wrap their minds around the fact that she wasn't insulting the woman's looks she used the term dachshund because the woman had little legs and it was a bigger seat for people with long legs right and then it's supposed to be i went through this for so many years with my books where they latch on to something and suddenly this becomes this horrible but you compared you her to a dog Dachshunds are adorable. What are you talking about? They have cute. You just obsessed with these things. And couldn't you have said it a different way? No, I'm sorry. It's Twitter. I spent 12 minutes on Twitter this weekend. Contra Daily Mail spent my entire weekend. No, it takes seven seconds to tweet. Yeah, maybe I could have chosen a different word. Um, and after you've written 12 New York Times bestsellers, I'll be fascinated to see what words you would have chosen. That's right. And it's like when I when I first met you in person and uh, a friend of mine, I said to my friend, you know, I had Ann Coulter. I was interviewed her at some kid, CPAC. I don't know remember it was, but many years ago. And she said, well, you know, she's a notorious anti-Semite. And I said... <laughs> What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, and she said, oh, no, you know, she thinks that, uh, you know, you're going to hell. And, uh, and I'm like, what? And then I started to, you know, do a little, uh, you know, background. And like they they will find the narrative and they will f make you fit that narrative. Right. Even if they have to twist you into a pretzel. Right. It's what they are going to represent. And they will never back down ever. You will forever be to that person what the what whatever whoever said it in the in the first place was and i'm watching this reporter in here and she's going well but do you think it was fair and do you think it was fair to to compare her to a dog and do you think it was fair to call her a dog I, what what does that mean she didn't call her a dog she wasn't comparing her to a dog she was talking about the length of her legs but they just it doesn't no i know and it works with the left um because oh, as I described it, yeah, in my book, Demonic, this is, they are subject to groupthink, 
to mobbish behavior, conspiracy theories and slogans work really well with them. They, they don't do what you did. Huh? What are they talking about? Let right. me read what she has. No, none of them have read me. No. None of them know what I have to say about anything, but they hear the label and that's all they need. They like labels. That's good. Yeah. That's why I think I get, usually give a lot of college speeches. Um, and, Not anymore. You're right. <laughs> and during Bush's term, I was apparently taken as the representative of the Bush administration. So the chant was Bush lied, kids died. Bush lied, kids died. I heard it so much. I started answering my phone that way. Bush lied, kids died. <laughs> um, and then Obama came in and they didn't know what to chant. <laughs> so the protesters kind of faded away. No, we, 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 we don't have a political opinion. There's no motto yet. Right. Well, <laughs> listen, I, I said to, to myself, uh, I was listening to some nonsense over the weekend. I can't even watch television at all anymore. And I said, I don't care how many people were in the room with Donald Trump Jr. I care that a Border Patrol agent was shot with a gun. Yeah. That the United States government had been no special prosecutor there. Right. I care that, uh, you know, the IRS went after conservative groups, yes. people that I know personally who were denied tax exempt status in, in nonprofits. Uh, I care about that. No special prosecutor right. there. I don't remember any special prosecutors, but I do have one now. And I do have a recused attorney general for what, Ann? I know. Well, my idea is for Trump to move Sessions, the sainted Jeff Sessions, to head Homeland Security. Kelly's all right. Eh. He's all right. Could have um, been worse. Well, I'm not sure whether to blame the emperor god Trump or Kelly, but they're still issuing those unconstitutional am amnesties and they still haven't started on the wall. So I say move Sessions over there. Um and there are a lot of fantastic people they could have at Department of Justice because I think one session chose Rod Rosenstein oh, it's over. as yeah. It's yeah. so why aren't there any IRS prosecutions? They won't be. Why you know why is Lois Lerner you know collecting right. a, a, a paycheck still to this day a, a golden parachute and, and and that's the kind of stuff that is just so frustrating to me. Look, you know if 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 somebody can prove that they did anything, the Trump campaign team, I'll be the first one to say right. you know, this isn't this is not the way we run a, an an open government. But they can't, uh, so they just keep throwing more and more crap to see if anything will stick. It doesn't stick, but you and I both know it. It's a death by a thousand cuts, you know. Yes, luckily they rendered they're him incapable. On, they're sticking on, I think, the craziest conspiracy theory: this Russia business. I think that's not going to help them in the elections. <laughs> hey, listen, I I can't believe that uh, you know that Maxine Waters is still out there screaming, you know, impeachment. This is a woman who is literally had every ethics charge in the country, <laughs> you know, filed in her admitted. Anyway, stay right where you are. We've got to take a break. Top of the hour here for the news. We were Facebook Live. If you had a chance you wanted to see Ann, that's the place to go.